Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing and initial impressions of the Pulsar 4K wireless dongle. Now, previous Pulsar mice have been locked down to 1K polling rate for quite a while now, and with the new versions of all their mice, the X2V2, the X2A, the X2H, and the Pulsar X Lite V3, we now are officially seeing 2 and 4K polling rate being brought to those lineups. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to see an 8K polling rate update for these ones like we saw with Razer with all of their mice where the Death Adder V3 Pro got 8K polling rate, the Viper and a bunch of other ones got 8K pulling rate with their new dongle. I don't think we're going to see that because I have a feeling AK is going to be reserved for the ES series of those mice. Given how most people's computers nowadays are only going to be able to really utilize 4 and 2K, it's completely fine in my opinion, but I am very interested to see how this 4K pulling implementation compares against all the other 4K mice I've used this year because 2023, the flavor of the month has been high polling rate. Every single mouse that I've seen this year has some iteration of high polling rate or some new polling rate tech. That's been the flavor of this year. So I'm really interested to see how Pulsar's implementation stacks up against all the other mice I've used this year and if they can stand out in terms of performance. Now, I will just say off the top of this video, this full review is going to take a long time for me to do. And the reason is, is because I have a bunch of testing methodologies for me to, to kind of test out the 4K and 2K performance. However, I am locked to 144 hertz. So it is going to be very, very, very difficult for me to actually tell the difference between a lot of these polling implementations. So it's going to take a lot of testing on my side and a lot of hours on these mice and on my other old mice to see how the polling rate actually compares and how it performs. So the full review of this will probably take a little while. It'll probably be sometime early next year, maybe January, or February. So just letting you know, it's going to be a while, but I just wanted to make sure I take my time and really do a good job and actually do as much of a raw comparison between the rest of my 4K polling mice to the Pulsar mice to see how they actually compare. So just want to get that out of the way. Now, one other thing I did want to say, this product was provided by Pulsar. So thank you very much to them. I greatly appreciate that. As always, I will have timestamps down in the video description and the comments. And if you have a particular question about the 4K dongle or the implementation or any issues you're facing, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll try and answer your question the best I can. If I can't answer your question now, I will do my best to cover your question in the full review. But anyways, let's go ahead and get right into the unboxing. Alrighty. Now, in terms of the unboxing experience, it was pretty straightforward. I did have two problems with my unboxing though, which was a little annoying. Number Number one is that the box was actually incredibly hard for me to open. For whatever reason, I had to like lobotomize my box and I had to cut the bottom layer off. So it turns out that the actual slip in here, the foam slip that actually holds the 4K dongle was installed backwards in my box, meaning that this foam stuff here was actually holding the box closed. If you flip the box the other way and just have this paper texture on it, it doesn't have the problem, but the foam actually like holds the box closed, which is a little annoying. So that is one problem I noticed. The other problem I noticed is that this dongle smells like shit. <laughs> I don't know why, but this dongle smells like burnt plastic. I have it on my desk right now, like it's over like here and I smell the burnt plastic smell. I don't know why it smells so bad. It literally smells like when you were a kid, you had those little LED lights and you hooked up to a nine volt battery and it would explode. And there'd be like that super strong burnt plastic smell. This dongle smells like that. I don't know why it smells so bad. I'm gonna like air it out and see if that goes away. But that is one thing I wanted to know. I don't know why this dongle smells like that. So if you get your dongle like that, let me know in the comments. Cause I'm not sure if it was just an isolated incident with the first batch, but that is just something odd I wanted to mention. But aside from the weird oddities with it the unboxing is pretty straightforward you have the dongle itself and you have the user manual now one thing to note there is no cable included in this one you will have to use the cable that came with your x2a x2h x2v2 or pulsar x Lite v3 because those cables will have the higher power allowance to allow for the 2 and 4k pulling rate you cannot use the older cables that pulsar had because they may not have the same power spec so keep that in mind make sure you use the proper cable with this but aside from that the unboxing is pretty straightforward aside from the two oddities i mentioned already the dongle itself actually actually does look really nice. I really do like the implementation. It does got a fair amount of weight to it, so it's not going to slip around to your desk too much. That is also aided by the little bit of plastic on the bottom, which is really nice to see. The dongle itself, the top shell has like this kind of semi-transparent thing, so you can kind of see on the inside. And then when the dongle is operational, it does have a blue LED on it. Now you can turn that LED off, but I'll cover that in a full video. But overall, I really do like the look of the dongle. The weight of it is good too. So overall, no problems with the dongle itself. It feels fantastic. All right, now in order to connect your Pulsar 4K compatible mouse to the 4K dongle, there's a bit of an interesting step you have to do here. So first of all, go to Pulsar's website. You have to go download a special 4K pairing software. You have to download that and run it on your computer. So go ahead, download that, open that up. And then what you want to do is you want to connect the 4K dongle to a compatible cable from a Pulsar 4K capable mouse. Again, make sure you use a proper cable that has the proper power efficiency for it or else it will not work properly. 
Once that's done, the software will say, put your mouse into pairing modes. So you're going to go ahead and on your mouse, you're going to hold down the left click, the right click, and the middle click for about three to four seconds. A little indicator light will flash on the side of the mouse, flashing orange, saying pair. And then once that's done, you're going to need a second mouse to click the pair button on the software. Now, I really don't understand why you need a second mouse because it just doesn't make any sense, but whatever. This stuff should be inside the Pulsar engine software, in my opinion. But basically, you use your second mouse to click the pair button and you can just pair your Pulsar compatible mouse. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with my X2V2 and my X2H, and then I'll come right back. Alrighty, I got my Pulsar X2V2 and my Pulsar X2H connected to the 4K dongle. Now, one thing I did know is that I went to go try and use the old dongles, and now neither my X2H or my X2V2 will connect to my 1K dongles. So I'm going to go figure out why they won't repair, and then once I get them repaired and I can figure out how to do the repair and unpair of the 4K and the 1K dongles, I'll be back to finish up this video. Okay, so turns out I have the equivalent IQ of a rusty frying pan um, I totally didn't even think of using the same software that you get to bound the mouse to the 4k dongle to just rebind it to the 1k dongle in my defense it doesn't say anywhere in the software for the 4k dongle itself or the mouse or on the support website how to do that or at least I couldn't find it on the website so I, this is one of those situations where it's like something stupidly obvious and I'm just an idiot and I overthink it and I just couldn't figure it out but anyways if you want to repair the mouse to the 1k dongle you use the exact same process you use to pair the mouse to the 4k dongle and you can just reset it to your 1k dongles already and now that you've gone through the process of connecting your 4k compatible pulsar mouse to the 4k dongle you can now go into the pulsar software select your mouse go to the performance tab and you will see under the report rate there is now options for 2 and 4k polling rates respectively in the full review i have to do a lot more testing of like polling rate density and how it actually operates on higher dpis lower dpis how 2k compares to 4k and compares to all the other mice i have so there's a lot of more in-depth testing i'll do in my full review but just off of a base of a couple runs on kovacs using the X2H with a 4K polling rate. I do notice a slight difference in how the mouse feels. Now that could just be due to the new shape. It could be a placebo. It could be a variety of other things, but there is a very small minor difference in the flicking speed, which is something I primarily notice more on higher polling rates. I do notice flicking is a little more consistent and a little more accurate for whatever reason. I don't know why. So again, that could just be placebo. It could just be the shape. It could be a variety of different things, but it's at least in my opinion, it's done something. It's more of just finding out what it's actually doing. Alrighty, well that's pretty much all I have to say about the Pulsar 4K dongle for now. I know this video is kind of short and I mean there's not really a lot to talk about a 4K dongle because it's going to be kind of hard to give performance value off of like a two minute unboxing. So as I mentioned before, stay tuned for a full, much more in-depth review of the 4K polling rate in the near future. I will probably have it done within the next one to two months. I know it's a long time but I want to make sure I'm doing my due diligence and at least mating each one of my 4K capable mice for like a week and doing a lot of 4K polling, 2K polling comparison data between those two mice on different DPIs and stuff. So it's going to take a while for me to do this review. So just bear with me in that one. But aside from the oddities of my dongle smelling like burnt plastic and having to download a separate piece of software to swap the dongle types. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Again, just off of very early polling testing, it's definitely making a difference on some variety, but how much of a difference that is and if it's placebo is going to be, of course, a big factor as well. I'll talk about the 4K polling performance a lot more in my full review. So get subscribed so you don't miss that. And if you guys aren't following me on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, or X or Twitter, or whatever the hell they're calling it now, I'll be making all kinds of little videos during my testing process and I'll be covering a lot of other stuff I'm testing at the same time as well. So if you want to stay in the loop on what's going on in the testing, be sure to go follow me on socials. But yeah, that's pretty much everything for today. So thank you very much uh, for watching. Thank you again to Pulsar for sending out the 4K dongle for me to take a look at. I greatly appreciate it. And I will catch you guys hopefully in the full review of the 4K dongles in a couple months. But yeah, we'll see you then. Peace.